afternoon and welcome to the 2021 Milwaukee Film Festival presented by Associated Bank. I'm Kara, I'm the Artistic Director here at Milwaukee Film, and you have joined us for our panel called Reimagining Care. This panel is presented in partnership with Mama Film, whose mission states that they are, quote, a village at the crossroads of arts and advocacy where storytellers, change makers, and nurturers come together to champion humanity through a maternal gaze. Mama Film is celebrating their two year uh, birthday this weekend. Uh, they have a brick and mortar cinema in Wichita, Kansas, uh, that I hope you all will go and visit. Um, so uh, Leela Meadow Connor, Connor, the founder, uh, sent, you know, sends her love and is very excited to watch this panel um, and watch these films and celebrate with you all as well. Uh, we're really thrilled to partner on this panel with Mama Film. Um, because that mission of the panel so neatly sort of aligns with these films and the conversation that we'll be having here today. Uh, the films Mama Gloria and Anatomy of Wings really help us re-examine re care in kind of an expansive lens, really thinking about chosen family, about intergenerational relationships, acceptance and community beyond maybe conventional notions of those things. Couple of housekeeping notes before we get started. Uh, feel free throughout the conversation to drop your questions and comments into the chat wherever you are on the internet. If you're watching live, those will make their way to our moderator and we will try to weave them into the conversation. Also, I will remind you that we do have a double up challenge happening this festival. Thanks to the generosity of Susan and Bob Michelet, if we can raise $50,000 during the 15 days of the festival, they will double it. A uh, couple ways you can help us meet that goal. You can text double up to 44321. You can uh, go to our website, mkefilm.org slash donate. Or if you're not a member or if your membership um, hmm, expires this month, uh, you can renew that membership this month. Um, we're hanging around 40% of that goal. Uh, not much traction yesterday. So uh, don't forget to contribute in any way that you can. Any dollar helps, uh, make, it takes a village, uh, theme, seems in theme with this panel today. Um, we're a nonprofit and we couldn't do what we do without the support of members, donors, supporters, uh, pocket change givers, all of you. So please con consider uh, helping support us through this match. And now I'm gonna get out of the way. I'm gonna turn the floor over to our moderator for this afternoon's panel, Trinice Ferguson. And I'm going to really absorb all the wonderful things that we're gonna hear this afternoon. Thank you, Trinice. Thank you. I am so excited to be here to moderate. Uh, be the moderator for today with the cast for um, Anatomy of Wings and Mama Gloria. Hello, everyone. <laughs> All right, again, I am very honored to be here after watching the film. Again, I already told y'all, big tear jerker, um, very authentic, lovely, all about community. And I'm excited to just have this talk with you. So um, actually I'm gonna steal something that was a part of Anatomy of Wings. We're gonna do a little, a breathe right now, a little breathe exercise. I'm gonna take that one. All right, everybody just breathe in and then breathe out. All right. Okay, so the first question is, tell us about yourself. So anyone can go one at a time. My, okay. <laughs> yes, Mama Gloria, um, go ahead. <laughs> I'm so excited to be on here. Um, I'm Mama Gloria, uh, pronoun she, her, and um, I've been around for a long time, and I'm so blessed that this is going on. And uh, I must give kudos to my beautiful little sister, Lucina Fisher. She has made me pop up 
I, you know, in the light. I've been in the light for a long time, but nobody recognized me. And um, I'm so happy that my story is out. And it's so much that I want to say because um, I have had so many beautiful women in my life and they are still in my life because they might be gone, but the spirit is there. The love is there. And um, I have experienced so many precious things with the female population. God has blessed me with these beautiful women. And I'm so glad that I'm a trans woman and I've been a trans woman for 75 years going on 76. And I want the trans girls to realize that you can get my age if you do the right thing, you know, be loving and caring about the world, you know, because the world is made of love. God put us in this situation, you know, we must embrace people, love people, and share our stories with people. You know, don't be ashamed of who you are or what you are. And I'm not ashamed. I've been there. You know, I'm a fighter. I'm a survivor. And I'm going to continue to do that, you know, because trans women and men, we're beautiful. God made us in his image. And people don't know what that means, you know. You know, I look at life. God gave me the breath to breathe. And I'm so happy about that. I'm so thankful and I'm so grateful to be here, you know, and I give all the praises to God. You know, we must take time out and praise and give him his glory, you know, and uh, I'm so blessed and so thankful for all of this, you know, and um, I'm happy. And God, sent this amazing woman in my life and you know I look at her I I am so happy you know that she's there and uh, people need to be like her you know she has a trans daughter and the love I see the love that she has for her beautiful baby her beautiful trans girl and I love her for that. My mother was the same way. My mother mm. and my grandmother and my great aunt, they were there to help me through all types of situations because I lived through the life. I've had people to hurt me, to talk about me. And, uh, you know, my mother said, don't let that bother you because you are a gifted person. And I thank her for telling me that. Mm. Well, Gloria, uh, do you want me to jump in here? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're about to cry. <laughs> I love you, dear. Um, I, I, Mama Gloria is going to take us to church. I'm just going to say that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so be ready. But I, uh, I'm Lucina Fisher, and I'm the director of uh, Mama Gloria. And uh, I'm, I'm so grateful uh, for the opportunity to uh, tell Gloria's story, to have Gloria in my life, to have met her. And um, I know that we'll be talking a lot about uh, mothers this weekend, uh, today. Mama in Film, thank you so much for um, bringing us together to have this really important conversation because it really is um, the story of a mother's love that um, attracted me to Gloria Allen's story. It's the story I wanted to tell. It's, um, it is how I live my life as a mother of a trans daughter um, that uh, 
you got to love and support your, your children, um, no matter um, who they are or who they become, um, because uh, they need that. It carries them through life. And Gloria is the best example of that. I love that um, both of you tied in why participate in a documentary. That was going to be my next question. Because, um, <laughs> and I just checked it off because that was just so beautiful to even make that correlation for your life to Mama Gloria. So thank you for being here and speaking both of your truths. Um, now we're going to move on to Anatomy of Wings. Please introduce yourself. Hi everyone. My name is Sheila. Um, I'm. Do I do I have to physically describe how I look? No. Oh. I mean, unless you want to. <laughs> yeah, she means for the for the hard of hearing. We we've done that at some of the Q and A's. Yeah. Um. My name is Sheila. Um, I live in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I currently work for the city of Baltimore. Um, and I also work for Marriott International. Um, I'm a workaholic. Um, I have a son, he's eight. Well, he turned eight this year. Um, and I think I'm done. I could hi. go next. Oh, oh God, Danisha. <laughs> um, well, hi, I'm Danisha. Um, my pronouns are also she and her, hers. Um, I'm a cast member of the Anatomy of Wings um, film. I'm also a musician a writer, um, and I'm currently working on my degree in sociology. Um, and I'm up in Tacoma, Washington right now, so I'm a little bit far away. <laughs> my name is Nikia. I am one of the um, filmmakers, co-producers, and co-directors of Anatomy of Wings. Um, I'm a full-time mommy to a 15-month-old. <laughs> Running crazy. And also, I am a book designer. I live in Baltimore. I'm here in Baltimore now. Um, I'm excited to be here. And hi, everyone. I'm Kirsten D'Andrea Hollander, uh, co director and co producer of Anatomy of Wings. And I'm also here in Baltimore today. I co-direct the Graduate School of Filmmaking at the Maryland Institute College of Art. But what I feel really uh, called to speak about in this moment is just from the very beginning, this conversation began how gratitude is a theme. Um, so I just wanted to say I'm really grateful to be on this panel today. Thank you. Well, welcome everyone. I am thrilled that y'all are here, and now we can get more into the discussion. So, um, what made you participate in a documentary? Uh, that's what I want to know. And this is for um, Anatomy of Wings, um, considering that you filmed for 10 years. So, how did it go from 6th, 7th, 8th grade to, you know, 22, 23? years old. So I want to know about that little story. <laughs> I don't know if we have enough time for the whole story. <laughs> um, I think for me, uh, can I, am I unmuted? Okay. Yeah. I think for me, um, the main thing was just having an opportunity to do something special. I think that, you know, young people, especially like from neighborhoods where we grow up at, it's hard to find an opportunity to stick out in a positive way. And the opportunity to have cameras and stuff that we didn't really have access to, like at home, was a big was a big selling point for me. But also <laughs> I wanted the opportunity to like share my story and kind of like be able to 
bring, you know, positive attention to myself and like put something out in the world that I knew other people were going to see eventually. So it was a big, that was a big opportunity for me. I feel like as a little 12 year old. Yeah. I noticed y'all were having a lot of fun filming each other and very doing selfies and filming yourselves. And it looked really fun. Like y'all were really exploring film. So while being filmed. So, um, yeah, what else we got? Um, for me, the upcoming of Wings, it was kind of just an activity to do after school at first because uh, I never wanted to go home. <laughs> um, but then it became a family, and I enjoyed going to Wings. Um, so then it just it became more than just an activity for me to do, just for me not to go home. I actually learned and made connected with people. Yeah, and to add to that, as, a, as one of their mentors, for me, it was a place where I knew I could continue making a difference or trying to, you know. Um, and then I ended up, falling into, a, well, not falling, but ascending into a big ball of crying and hugging and I love you. And I'm just like, I'm not used to that. Um, and I, I realized as a mentor, I needed that. You know, I needed that space. So, yeah. I'll just like to add again how blessed I am and grateful, you know, to be with this group of women. Um, we didn't know what we were doing in the beginning, but we, all of us together, created a space where you could come and be who you are as you are. And, and that's ultimately what we ended up filming together. Yeah. That was beautifully said, everyone. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so. Yeah, so th now this is for both casts. How does it feel to see yourself on screen? When you saw it, the final product, and you're like, that's me. How did you feel? <laughs> did I unmute? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Um, I didn't much mind seeing myself versus hearing myself. I hated the way I heard it sounded. Um, it still takes getting used to, but um, it was a lot of fun. I agree with Sheila. For me, watching myself, well, listening to myself, I don't think I listen to my own voice that much. Um, Cause when you're filmed, it's like in a whole different, you know, capacity. But then also seeing me cry on camera is like, oh my goodness, we can make a whole film about this. So it's just like, do I want to be this vulnerable? I'm not really that person to do this. Um, but just, you know, the practice of watching itself over and over again, you get kind of used to it. I'll say for me, it was, it was, it's really crazy every time I watch it to just watch yourself grow up. Like you think you have like pictures and you can remember stuff. You know, when you're like 16, you remember being eight and all like you remember that very clearly. But now I just turned 26 and I'm watching this and I'm like, some of this stuff, I just don't remember this stuff. <laughs> like I don't remember any of this stuff. Like, and even some of the behind the more behind the scenes footage, like some of the things that we would like say that we don't feel that way anymore because we've grown up and we have different, you know, ideas about the world and things now. And then some of it is still exactly the same as it was before. Cause that's just like the core of who you are. I thought that was just, it's really crazy to like watch that and to be able to, it's special to, to have that captured on camera. Mama Glory, I think you are muted. Can you hear me? There you go. Okay. <laughs> For me, pictures have always been in my family. We would take pictures 
and we would save them. I always had a little hope chest where I would put my pictures in, you know, because I was so proud of my mother. My mother was a beautiful, sexy lady, and she was a dancer. She danced. So I was always surrounded by uh, basically show people. Uh, my mother's best friend, her name was Laureline Hunter, and she would sing with the big band Count Basie and all of them. So when our, our girlfriend would come to the city, she would come to my mother's house, and I would just be in awe over this beautiful singer, which was my mother's girlfriend. And I wanted to be in the limelight, you know, because my mother was. So I would, my mother would always take me with her to shows that she was dancing in. My mother was just, oh, I wanted to be like her ever since I was a baby, you know. And um, I strive to do that and I did it you know I said well I'm gonna be like my mother my mother and my grandmother and my great aunt and uh, people don't realize you know my uncle was with the Dave Rubat band so it was always a, a a lot of stuff going on in the house and I got a chance to do and see things and um i said well i'm i'm going to do this i'm going to be like my mother and i that's what i did and i'm so grateful that this beautiful woman raised gave birth to me and i'm so proud of that but i had to go through difficult times with the people in my life, you know, because a lot of people did not like Mama Gloria. I wasn't Mama Gloria then; I was just Gloria. So I, um, I, I had a rough time, but I navigated through it, you know. So um, I'm so proud of my mom and my grandmother and my great aunt. They were the light of my life. I'm so proud. And now I got such another amazing group of women. Lucina, I love you to no end. I think about her and her daughter, and I am so proud to be in that circle with them. So thank you, Lord. That's a perfect like segment to the next question, which is just talking about community and family. So what does this mean to you? What is community and family? What does that mean to you? To me, that means a lot, you know, because I had a charm school at the center on Halstead for the young trans people. And I got a chance to talk with them, listen to them, and give them tools of survival, you know, how to be in this crazy mixed up world, but you can, you know, stand your ground and do what you have to do. So these amazing trans people, gay people, the LB community, you know, what all these letters, I didn't know what they mean, you know, but now I know. And um, my babies, that's what I'm going to call them, my babies. I would talk to them. I would cook for them. And, um, you know, God didn't give me babies, but I, I got them. He really bless me with these beautiful people. And I want people, I want the world to know we are beautiful. 
Some people don't think we're not beautiful, but I don't care what they say. I love my family. I love them. You know, I embrace them and I want them to know they mean so much to me. I, I mean, how can you not think Mama Gloria is beautiful? Um, and I just knew that by um, putting her at the center of her own story, letting her tell her own story um, and uh, receive that Hollywood treatment that she so deserves, that she grew up in on the South side of Chicago, uh, that, that people would be taken, taken by her. They would take her into their hearts. Um, and so community, um, uh, the way that I approach it um, as, uh, as a mother of a trans daughter, as an advocate um, and staunch ally of the community um, is to build these connections. Um, you know, for me, that was really important as a mother that my daughter um, meet folks like Gloria and know um, the people who came before her who blazed the trail for her and made this uh, moment of visibility possible for her. Um, and it's also an opportunity for her to see her future. As Gloria uh, touched on earlier, um, it's important for, for young trans people and especially young black trans women um, to see um, folks like Gloria who are living a long and glorious life um, with grace and with joy. Um, she gets out there every day. She greets each day um, and, and no matter what it brings. And um, I want my, my daughter to see that she can have that long, wonderful life. Um, so, so yes, our community has expanded. Um, by the gift of my daughter um, being able to, to come out and be her full and true self. Um, that opened up an amazing, abundant and beautiful rainbow community to me. And I am so grateful. Thank you. Yeah, I also wanted to highlight um, for Mama Gloria, with family, speaking of family, I believe it was one of your cousins um, when you were in, you know, high school, and people will say things, right? And they will stick up for you even if it were their friends saying something. So I wanted to highlight that because some folks, just because they're your friends, you can still stand up to your friends about what you believe in. So I thought that was very important um, to just say quickly because some people are scared to do that. Um, so just highlighting cousins right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yes. Uh, well, I'm so, my family is amazing. You know, some of them can be a little bit, you know, but I put, <laughs> I, I put them in their places, you know. So, uh, but my cousins, oh, the Lord blessed me with so many beautiful cousins. And I, I just get around them and we have such an amazing time, you know, and that means so much to me. Uh, the male cousins, they sort of standoffish, but um, basically they love me too. But my cousin Gail, oh, Gail is just the best cousin and my cousin Carolyn. Carolyn on my great aunt side. Oh, they are so beautiful and so supportive of me. And I remember when my great aunt was alive, she would always have Christmas and Thanksgiving dinner and breakfast at her house. And my aunt would always tell me, Gloria, we're looking for you to come to the gathering of Christmas and Thanksgiving. And we are so thankful that you 
are in our family. And uh, when they told me that I'm an emotional person, I will break down and cry anywhere because they are tears of joy. And I'm so thankful for that. Now that my uh, great aunt has passed on, uh, my cousin Carolyn and Elisa, Lisa, they still carry on the tradition of Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I love being around them too. And my cousin Gail, she does that too. And I get a chance to go there. So I'm happy about all of this. And they have their friends. Their friends love me. I don't have no problems with their friends. And my family is just, it's just amazing to be around these people. And uh, I tell them, you know, uh, the joy, the joy that God has placed upon us, you know, and the love and this Love should be shared by everyone, even the outsiders, you know, because I still do this, the trans community, when I see somebody that's not doing well or they're hungry, I, I provide for them because that's what my great aunt and my grandmother and my mother taught me because I remember as a kid, they would always put an extra plate on the table. And I'll be saying, well, who is this for? And my mother and grandmother would tell me, you just sit down and be quiet. She said, cause somebody's gonna knock on a door that needs a good meal. And it was so true. They would come and Oh, I would have such a great time seeing this. And I learned from them. I do it myself, you know. And uh, you, you have to share the joy and the love that, you know, that was placed upon us. We got to do that. Share. Give a person a hug you know and i can walk down the streets in the community and they'll run up to me and say mama mama gloria i give them a hug and i just love it you know because these are my family and my babies i have a feeling you give the best hugs i just have yeah. a feeling right yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Mama Gloria. Oh, um, now for Anatomy of Wings, I want to talk about this retreat that done happened. So um, there was some a bit of chaos there, right? Um, so mainly for the adults right now, how are you able to recognize the girl's feelings because I also, um, uh, when watching that, um, it was like, this is not this is not just about today. This is about other things that is happening. So how did you recognize that and create a safe space for the girls to just express themselves, even if it got a little chaotic? And how did you bring it back for them? Do you want to go first, Nikia? <laughs> no, okay. Um, so this is a very powerful question, and I think it can be hard to watch. Um, but the truth is, I don't think many people live their lives without um, engaging a miscommunication or argument such as what we experienced. Um, who? Uh, there really are no words. It's. I feel like just the way, like. Trinice, you're creating a space for us right now to be together on this uh, on this call. Um, you, you know, of course, 
when there's an argument like that, you're kind of thrust into the unknown because you don't know how it's going to turn out. So, you know, we, we began today breathing together. It was like an internal breath that was just doing all of us. I, I don't know how else really to say it. And, um, we were really being held by the space we were in. Um, we were in this beautiful countryside with lots of trees. Um, and I really believe that that was part of um, one, allowing the rawness and the vulnerability to emerge, but then also the grounding of all the trees and the land to kind of help us come back together. That was my experience. Um, but uh, I, I think Again, there, there's not a lot of words except that um, sometimes you just have to go into the unknown. I think even when we were erupting, we were still together, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we had built such a, a connection that you see, you know, on camera and, and in real life that that blow up we had, the arguments that we had that, that night, they they shook us to the core, but they still, we had such a foundation that Kirsten had helped us to, to build as a community um, that it was just kind of like dirt off your shoulder, you know, but a big chunk of dirt, you know, not just some brush. It was just like, we had the ability to stand strong in our love for each other, but that night it was our test, like, you know, um, are we really going to be able to be a family after telling each other how it is <laughs> in all of our dialects, whether it's Baltimore language, New Jersey language, you know, got Jane with the English accent. So it just was all us being ourselves in the moment. Um, yeah, it was tough for me to watch myself react in the moment. <laughs> Because the clapping, I don't do that every day. So it's just like, oh, that's Baltimore. That's Baltimore black female. That's that's probably generally black female. When you're upset, it's like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> like oh, no. Um, and then Kirsten is screaming, but not really screaming because that's, you know, it's a calm scream, but it's the Kirsten scream. And then you got corns are throwing stuff she doesn't do that you know what i'm saying like we all were just like in a zone and i'm just i mean i'm thankful that that happened because it showed me that a family like that can get through anything you know yes i was um i learned that to make true community there needs to be a little bit of chaos there right like that's how you really get to know each other you're finally opening it up how can you express yourself without expressing that side too? Like that's an emotion as well. Um, and that was beautifully welcomed. So y'all did an amazing job with that. And again, that was a tearjerker right there too. <laughs> because I can only imagine being in that space and having to be the adults to control all of these different emotions that are going on and all of these different stories that are finally being told to each other. So, and um, Nakia, um, you also said, and this was another tearjerker, <laughs> of how dare people want to expose children to art without talking about where they came from. And that was very, very important to hear. So um, just thinking about, and. On, on here, we have Chicago and Baltimore, right? We're representing Chicago and Baltimore. So how 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 did your upbringing impact you? And that's for anyone who wants to answer that. For me personally, I, um, I come from East Baltimore and I come from an area called Zombie Land by a lot of Baltimore reporters. Um, so that just gives you a picture of whatever. Uh, but I know that me being in after school programs and also me, me being a mentor and me ended up um, like 
being a manager of some, it's such an emphasis on exposure. And I was exposed to so much um, violin, piano, everything that my mom could do to get us to have a taste of something different. But at the end of the day, something I could have also used is the experience of like human connection and, and um, knowing how to hold space for someone, um, knowing how to hold space for myself, knowing what to do if one of my students had a breakdown. And, and we had all these kind of um, legal training in the past, I did, um, of what to do if a student breaks down because something reminds them of something horrific like being molested as a child. But where's the training for a mentor to know how to hold the space emotionally versus writing it down on paper and reporting it? Um, and that's kind of what I feel like Wings tapped into. It tapped into, for me as a mentor, being able to hold space for, um, for youth, for any person who's experiencing any kind of emotion Sometimes I can step into their bubble and and just be there with them. Um, and it's a practice, you know, but what if you were really given the space to be seen and heard so that they can feel seen in whatever they're speaking about, experiencing at the moment? And what does that mean for us mentors to be able to do that for them? Wow, it's powerful. Um... I think for me, um, there there are a few things that I brought to the film. Um, my background as a storyteller, of course, that came up, uh, I think, from childhood, um, uh, being an army brat, living all over the world, having to um, quickly um, get, get into a situation, meet people, um, and and know how to talk to anyone really, um, but also being very attracted to um, stories uh, from a young age, from from television to uh, film to books. Um, so so certainly I bring that, um, but but also background uh, growing up um, with a brother who was gay. Um, who uh, sadly uh, contracted AIDS and, and died in the early 90s. Uh, but before he did, he was an artist and writer and a really profound influence on me. Um, he told me, you need to do something about this. Um, and he meant um, to bring the faces of Black people who have AIDS um, to the screen because that was something we weren't seeing in the late eighties and early nineties. Um, and then having a sister who is queer, um, uh, you know, growing up in, this, in that family um, and seeing also how my dad um, uh, and my brother often did not get along and uh, the impact that that had on my brother. Uh, so, you know, becoming a mother um, finding that my child didn't fit um, this uh, this idea of what I thought, um, you know, or what the doctors told me my child is or was, and um, and and really just opening myself up to who she was trying to tell me she is, um, and I think I was able to do that because of my growing up experience. And, and I brought all of that uh, to the making of the film, um, to just being able to um, sit with Gloria and understand um, uh, what she was telling me um, and her experience with her mother. Um, I, could, I could completely um, relate to that. And I'm so uh, proud and happy with Lucina, the work that she has done and her story about her family, which was just a tearjerker for me because uh, the men in my family, 
they did not like me. You know, they didn't tell me that, but I could tell by their actions. Because I remember uh, my dad that raised me, he was an, an educated man and uh, it was difficult for me to communicate with him because uh, he was basically, you know, didn't want me around, you know. So I uh, would go to my mother and I would tell her that my dad don't like me. And my mother said, well, you just ignore him. And if you have any problems, with him, you come to me and I will interrupt and tell him about himself. And she did. Uh, the making of the film, my brothers on the Allen side of the family, they are so, how would I put it? They, they didn't want me to do this, you know, because they would be ashamed of what their friends might say. But my family on the day side, my half brothers and sisters, they love it, you know, and they are educated and uh, they love it. And my real father was a man that was um, artistic. Yes, he was. He was a beautiful looking man. And uh, he loved my mother to no end. And it was difficult coming up, you know, with two side families, you know, because the one side, I still love them, although they were stupid to me, but I loved them. And I would never stop loving them. But my good side, my father's side, the man that uh, had relation with, relationships with my mother and out of that relationship, Mama Gloria. And I got a gay brother on the day side of the family and he and I, we have just a great time and the dice family i love them i go to them they want me around them and i i'm just so blessed to be with the two-sided family you know because i get a chance to talk about how i was raised up and i the dice family how they were raised up they were raised up. They all went to college and finished and got degrees. But on the Allen side of the family, they didn't do that. I was the only one out of that Allen side of the family to graduate from high school and go to college for a year. But, you know, they thought I was just weird, you know. Here's this pretty boy that wants to be a girl. That's what they would say. And I would just say, forget them, you know. They don't know what they're missing. They need to get out and be productive. But they weren't like that. All they wanted to do was get a job and make money. and. The outcome of that, they had ch children that they did not love and take care of. And I, today, I love my great nieces and nephew, and I'm there for them, you know. Uh, I lost a brother to COVID-19, his name was Stephen. Oh, that was my baby because Stephen was a beautiful, beautiful chocolate baby. And uh, 
He thought he was James Brown reincarnated. He would get up and dance and move, and I would sit there and just clap, and my mother would clap too, because he was such a talented, beautiful baby. And uh, when he died, a part of me was taken away, but I made a promise to him, your children, your grandchildren, and your great grandchildren, they would always get a birthday card from me and I would always tell them, you can call me and talk to me. And they do, they do. And uh, I'm just so blessed to have all these children, you know, their fathers didn't do nothing for them, but I stepped in and I'm going to continue to step in and do for them. I just love I love the world. I love everybody, you know, because everybody, we're equal and we deserve love, you know, and that's me. You know, Mama Glory is a loving woman. Yes. Thank you so much for all of those words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like we always dive into your life every time you give answers. <laughs> so welcoming. Wow. Um, so I'm going to, because we're a little tight on time, but I want to actually get into a more serious topic, which is trauma, because there's a lot of trauma being talked about a little bit talked about here on this panel as well. So I just wanted to talk to the girls. I feel like y'all still 16 for some reason. You're like, no, I'm 26. I'm like, what? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> like, I just watched you yesterday. But um, <laughs> how did you cope with trauma? So if it was um, bullying, the family lifestyle. Um, I know, Sheila, you just mentioned um, you didn't want to go home. So how did you, how, how do you, cope with it? Um, me personally, um, I don't know. I went through a roller coaster, I guess. Because um, when I was younger, I used to find the arts to kind of cope with whatever I was going through. I would write, I would draw. I wasn't very great at drawing, but I would draw. Um, I would dance, sing. I would do anything. Um, then as time moved on, I just started hiding. Um, I would hide myself from people I didn't, yeah. Um, but thanks to Miss Kirsten, um, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> For think, me, oh, sorry. Okay. For me, uh, trauma made me stronger, you know, because um, as a kid, I was molested by the babysitter. And uh, I kept it a secret because I didn't want nobody to know. I was so ashamed that this was happening to me. But uh, I got to the point in my life at the age of 13, I told my mother what happened to me. And my mother was so horrified. She said, I come, I didn't come to her. And I told my mother, I said, at a young age, I was like five or six years old. Who's gonna believe what happened to me? And my mother told me, she said, baby, all you had to do was come to me and tell me about it. And I told her I was ashamed that this happened to me. And she told me, don't you ever be ashamed of things. You can always come to me or to your grandmother or your great aunt and tell us about it because we want to know. But it made me stronger and tough. You know, so I became the person this, I was a fighter. 
you know, because I fought and I fought hard to be here in this world. And I would tell my girlfriends and my trans girls, you all can come to my mother's house and that you will be accepted. And they were, they were. Uh, the men and the boys in the house would sit and look at these girls and they wondered what is going on here. But my mother would tell them, these are glorious family and you all are going to accept it. And they did. And uh, coming up, I was in a relationship with an abusive man that I loved to no end. And uh, I put up with this for a long time because I thought this is what women go through to keep a man. And my mother and grandmother told me, well, honey, let me sit you down and tell you something. You don't put up with that. You don't stand for it. If he put his hand on you, you let us know. And my mother told him, she said, well, if he put his hands on you, we know what you going to do. And I was a fighter. I protected myself when I got up to the age and out of the house. And I'm so thankful that, you know, to be a fighter. And that's what I want my young trans girls, even the old one, you can fight, you know, stand up for yourself because you deserve to have an equal right just like anybody else. And I'm so thankful that I can do this. I talk about it and they can come to Mama Glory and tell me and I'll try to give them the right answer because, hey, we are human beings and we deserve to live our lives the way we want to and love yourself and love others. And then last, I want to ask Denisha, how, how did you cope? How do you cope? Um, I think for me as a young person, I wasn't, I was a storyteller too. I started like writing. I liked to, to listen to music, like write music, write songs, poetry, anything like that. It was kind of like when I had a lot of things going on, like in my home life, like with, you know, having to move around and foster care, anything like that. It just felt to me like it was a part of my story that was just developing. And I think that's just the way that, you know, I kind of like rationalized it in a way. But I think that, you know, as others have said, um, it just became a thing for me to overcome and something to add on to my story later on. And I knew that I would be a person who would try to tell my story when I was older and try to help others and, you know, connect with other people in that way, because I know that, you know, although things you feel alone when you're going through something, it's not just you. There's other people who have similar experiences, you know, and being a yes. part of Wings helped me see that, you know, yes. community can be a place to heal from trauma and it can be a place to learn from your past experiences together and move forward with, um, you know, your story in a way that can be impactful for more people. So when you're going through something, it's not just in vain and it's not just happening to you. It's just another it's just another part of your story. I think that's that's how that's how I look at things now. Wow, I just want to honor this space right now. So just everybody breathe in, breathe in that wonderful truth that y'all just said, okay? So breathe in and breathe out because it takes a lot of courage to talk about that. Um, and I know y'all proud hearing your girls, hearing cast members say their truth like this. It's very inspirational. Yeah. Um, so thank you for that. Um, 
And then last question is for everyone. When we're talking about, um, we went like talking about like fighting for your rights or learning how to express yourself, um, coping, um, literally watching your girls grow up, watching your babies grow up. Um, what are you most proud of? Or just what are you proud of? That's the closing question. What are you proud of? After all this experience, what are you proud of? I'm just so proud that the film is out in the world and and literally, um, you know, we were in the UK um, a month ago and, and still, you know, getting lots of response, um, getting requests from all over the world. Um, I always wanted the world to meet Mama Gloria and that's happening. And um, and I wanted her to have the the platform that she deserves, and and so yeah, I'm really really grateful that that's happening. I'm so proud and so happy that this documentary was done by this amazing woman that I love to know in, and I I am proud to be Mama Gloria. I'm proud to be Gloria. You know, I can walk with my head up in the air and I get so many people telling me, oh, I saw you on film and you are so beautiful. And that I love because my heart, my heart is beautiful and I share that with everybody. I go out, um, notice, and um, Mama Glory is happy with her life. She's happy what she had to go through to get where she is today. And all these amazing women, and I put these women in a bouquet. God gave me this beautiful bouquet of women and i am so grateful and thankful and when i get a chance to meet the maker i'm gonna tell him or her what he has done or what she has done for me and my life my life today i am so happy i wake up with a smile i go to bed with a smile and that's the way I want everybody to be because God is love. And that love that he gives to us, we have to share it with everyone. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, I am proud of I don't want to sound corny, but everything. <laughs> um, I'm proud of how far I made it in life. I'm proud of um, how my son is turning out. Um, I'm proud of the connections I was able to make, the connections I'm still making. Um, just all the little progresses and everything. Um, I'm really glad to have met everyone that I have. And um, and hopefully I can make have share the experience with someone else. I'll go next. Um, I am so proud of Danisha, Sheila, Kirsten. Marquise, Tawana, Tez, Brittany, Cammy, uh, Quandra, Quanisha, Jane, Cinnamon, Kata, Julia, all of us, Larry, Devon. Like it, it took a whole village of people to make this film, and and I'm proud to be one of the people, you know, that's been a part of this process, and it's just an honor to see. Um, to see the girl's work come to life, to see Kirsten's dream for us come to life, uh, to see myself morphing into a filmmaker, 
Um, it's just such an honor that we get to share the platform with legendary people like Mama Gloria and Miss Latina. Um, it's just amazing. And, and we're really like paving the way for ourselves to have like authentic stories. Like Mama Gloria's story is authentic. Our story is authentic. We're just being us. Um, and we, we don't need anybody else to clap for us. We're clapping for ourselves. Um, and I'm just so thankful for us being women, identifying as women in this space and, and trailblazing. Proud. Yes. Yes. Okay, um, I can go. I'm proud too. I'm proud of everybody <laughs> here today, <laughs> and I'm I'm just I'm also just so proud. Like you know, as it's it's different looking back and reflecting on something. You know, when you're going through it, you don't realize how special it is until until after the fact. And it's, I'm just so proud of how you know our little group has has happened. You know, like Sheila was saying, I'm proud of how my family's turning out from being able to hold space for each other and be the person in my community that can create safe spaces for belonging and, you know, collaboration between people so we can expand, you know, the potential of everybody, of who we are and how loving we can be and how accepting we can be of each other. So I'm just really proud of everything um, that we've been able to accomplish because it is something that's now out in the world and hopefully we're able to impact people with the way that they interact with each other and create more of that because it really is needed like mama glory was saying earlier there isn't enough love in the world or enough spaces um in the world where people can just feel accepted and and move on you know move past the basicness of just can somebody accept me and love me like move past that and be able to become who we really are meant to be so yeah i'm just i'm just proud of that i'm proud of everybody on the, the panel for putting that into the world yes There's really not much more I could add. Um, I, you know, at the end of the day, we needed a community, so we made one. Yeah. Yes. Here we are. Yes. Wow. You know what? You know what I'm proud of? I'm not crying this whole time. I am proud. Y'all almost, y'all had me like at every question. I'm just like, like <laughs> seriously, just beautiful people. This was a amazing space. Um, still, like, it's like I know y'all. Ain't that weird? Like, <laughs> I just watched you. Now I'm asking questions, and this is just this is a proud moment of being able to even do something like this, talking to women about what we go through. Um, what we may not really recognize on a daily basis as well. So just thank thank everyone. Thank, thank you for joining and actually making a documentary to educate and celebrate. Yes. Perfect, right? That was nice, a little rhyme there too. <laughs> and I, I don't think I'll smile so hard. Y'all cheekbones, y'all cheek, everybody cheekbones are all the way up here, so. <laughs> made a big family today so all right thanks everyone um i believe someone is coming back in <laughs> oh no i think that's the end then i think we end here all right <laughs> All right, well, thanks everyone for um, watching and that is a wrap for today. So if you have not watched the documentary, please go watch Mama Gloria and Anatomy of Wings. And everybody say love. 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 Yes, thank you. <laughs> I love hearing it. All right, everyone have a wonderful rest of your day. And share the, share the love, share the love. <laughs>